YouTube. Today we are doing free code camp, JavaScript algos and data structures course. We just finished the basic JavaScript course. All 113 lessons are available on my channel if you need help getting through any of those. And now we are starting ES6. So ES6 is a whole other course of, uh, of this JavaScript module here. Um, it's only 29 lessons, so it shouldn't be too bad and is still pretty basic if we look at what we're going to get into regarding regular expressions, algorithms, OOP, intermediate algorithms. So this is still kind of the fundamentals and um, is definitely good to pick up as soon as possible, I would argue, because ES6 is a 2015 standard of JavaScript. When we're talking about any of the ES versions, we're talking about the ECMA script, uh, meaning the standardized version of JavaScript, um, that browsers use uh, to run their JavaScript. Okay, so um, ES5, which is what we learned in this basic JavaScript course, is essentially just the vanilla JavaScript syntax. Is syntax is like 2009, and then 2015 came ES6, and we got some powerful new features like arrow functions, destructuring classes, promises, and uh, modules, which we'll definitely get into later uh, in this course. So. Basically, while you may be aware that we're, we're past ES6 now, this is still relevant information, and this is a great course to, to go through if you've only done basic JavaScript or just some basic other JavaScript courses. Just because ES6 is, is a standard now, um, and the reason that it's taught, you can learn vanilla JavaScript and then ES6, is because all of these new features that were added are now standards in all of the newer versions of JavaScript, right? So modern JavaScript coding or programming uh, uses and utilizes all of these features that we're listing here. Um, so it's definitely, you know, worth learning those in the ES6 syntax. And then as you continue your JavaScript development journey, you can learn some of the other shortcuts that were added in uh, versions above ES6. But at the core of it, ES6 is kind of still the, at least the new features in ES, ES6 are kind of the kind of still the core features that we use in modern JavaScript coding. So let's start. Let's compare scopes with the var and let keywords. Um, once again, as we go through these challenges, guys, I would definitely recommend you read all this, absorb as best as possible what it's trying to convey, what actual concept it's trying to teach you, and then use the video if you need help or you, you're you getting stuck. Uh, it's not worth getting stuck on something for more than 15, 20 minutes. If you're you know trying to learn by yourself, you're not going to it's not an efficient way to learn by yourself, essentially, is to just struggle with the same problem. So definitely utilize the video or utilize uh, the free code camp forums if you get stuck for more than 20 minutes and then kind of watch my solution and, and uh, breakdown and then go back and try it yourself. Don't code along with me, okay? So that's the best way to kind of actually pick up what's going on here, even if my explanation doesn't make sense. So essentially what this whole lesson is trying to teach us is the difference between the scope uh, of the let and var keywords. If you don't know about the let keyword or the const keyword, that's kind of the default to instantiate a variable that we're going to use in JavaScript. Var should be respected because of its historic value to JavaScript, but we don't really use var any, anymore, which is what this whole lesson is trying to teach us essentially, uh, because of the scope of var, because it's, it's declared globally, it's global, uh, or locally if it's in a function so we, we don't want that to, to happen. We want to use let generally or const generally. So if we declare a let keyword inside of a block statement or expression, it is limited to that block statement or exp expression. So if I change, uh, and if we look at the bottom here, this is actually what it wants us to do, is we want to not use the var keyword anywhere in the code, and we want to fix it. So I declared in the if statement, um, so this i is a separate variable than the one on the line on the first line of the function. So this i is separate from this i. Uh, and as you can see, the whole point of this exercise is to illustrate the differences between let and var. When programming, uh, actually coding, we would not want to use the same name of variables like this, especially within this close of a scope just because this is bad practice and we'll have naming conflicts and problems like this. So I think what we should be able to do is just change this to let i equal function scope, run that, okay. So block scope, this one is getting the block scope and the function scope is getting 
the black scope as well. So we're accessing the same eye here. So I should just be able to say, let I equal black scope. And now if we run this, we should get a pass because we're redeclaring I here and using let. So this let is local, or this let I, this I variable is local here and down here because this whole block contains a new declaration, right? We've redeclared it as something else here. So this whole block uses this block scope I, and then this top part and this part down here. I can't really highlight multiple, I don't think. Yeah, so these two parts, line seven and eight, and line two, one through two, are using this function scope because these are within the function, and then this block is getting the block scope because we redeclared here. And the, thing, the important thing to note is we're using let i here. Um, if we said like var i equals function scope, and we said let i equal block scope, this would technically work as well. It just doesn't want us to use var. Um, and the important thing to note on why this is working is because we redeclared, right? We didn't just say i, we didn't just reassign by saying i equals block scope, which would re access this existing i variable, we redeclared i with a let. So we're saying let i, this new i, equal block scope. So while these naming conflicts make it confusing, um, the important thing to note is we added a let here, which makes this a new declaration, not an assignment. Okay, so what that means is this i was not reassigned this i, right? This i in here was not this i reassigned we're redeclaring it as something new with another let. So I think I kind of went into repeated myself too many times there, but I hope that made sense. Uh, the whole reason that this is working now is because we're redeclaring, not redeclaring, we're declaring a new I here, essentially. We're not reassigning like this because we're, we're accessing I that exists. We don't have to say let. We're redeclaring a new, not reassigning, okay? So that's the important thing to note about uh, that this was trying to teach us about the let and var. Uh, we want to use let in this instance just because it has this scoping rule that allows us to do this, allows us to avoid these conflicts. Okay, so I hope that helped. Hope that made sense. See you guys in the next lesson.